Hey y'all, today I'm gonna be sharing a new what's for dinner. I'm gonna be showing five nights worth of dinners, just some recents that I've made for my family of four. I know how hard meal planning can be. I know that when I first started really getting into cooking, meal planning felt so easy. There was just so much that I hadn't tried and I was eager to, but now that I'm older and I've been doing this for a while, it can truly be a headache sometimes just trying to figure out what to put on the table every night, just trying to switch it up and you know make it not boring but that's why I love putting these videos together in hopes that it helps y'all and saves y'all some time I really enjoy just letting y'all know what was a hit for us or you know not a favorite basically we are in this together and I love hearing y'all's input just as much so let's jump on into this first recipe on this night I'm making some chicken alfredo tortellini soup so I've got my big soup pot out and I start up by melting a couple tablespoons of some butter and then I just threw in some carrots and some broccoli. Now the recipe called for one large carrot to be, you know, chopped up and thrown in, but I had a bag of matchstick carrots in my fridge and I knew that would go good in a soup. So that's what I used. I just threw in a big handful and I did about one and a half cups of broccoli and I did season it with some onion powder. I did saute it for about five minutes to let it start softening before adding in a big spoonful of minced garlic. I just used the jar stuff, cooked that for a couple of minutes. And then here I just added in a quarter cup of just some plain all-purpose flour. I'm stirring it well to make sure it's coating all the veggies and I did cook that out for a couple of minutes. So the next step I'm going to grab my heavy whipping cream and I'm going to add in two cups of that. I also wanted to mention that if you like actual onion you could saute that with the carrots and broccoli instead of using the onion powder. That's just a step that I do. But once I got the heavy cream stirred in good, making sure there was no lumps with the flour or anything, I grabbed some chicken stock and added in five cups of it. You could also use chicken broth if you wanted to. And then I just seasoned it well with some garlic powder, um, kosher salt, and plenty of black pepper. I'm making sure that's stirred really well throughout the whole pot. My heat's on about a medium high heat and I'm just waiting for this to start coming to a simmer. So, about this point, you can see it's starting to have some activity. So I started a timer and I just let this cook for about eight minutes just so that those veggies could get really nice and soft and so that that soup can start thickening up. So this is the tortellini that I'm going to be using. I only need nine ounces of it. So I did actually weigh that out on a food scale. Sometimes I just like things to be accurate, just depending on what it is. So I added that into the pot and I also added in about two cups of some shredded rotisserie chicken. Now here's where I steered away from the recipe just a little bit. It said to cook your tortellini first and then turn off the heat and add in your chicken and cheese. But when I got home from the store, I shredded it up. I stored it in the fridge and it stayed in there for about a day so my chicken was really cold I wanted to make sure it was really nice and heated through so I just cooked it with a tortellini took about seven minutes I believe and that's when my tortellini was fully cooked the chicken was heated through and then I just added in two cups of some shredded parmesan cheese I've been using the one from Costco lately it's been really handy really like the taste of it and as soon as that cheese is melted all throughout, only takes a couple of minutes, it is ready to be served. And I know that it does not look like anything spectacular, but it was seriously so amazing. It definitely exceeded my expectations. All of us loved it, and it's definitely a new family favorite. It tastes like a really good homemade chicken alfredo. I'm just using tortellini and, you know, in soup form and a couple veggies added in. It was just a really good dinner, and I served it with some garlic breadsticks, and it heated really well as leftovers as well. Next up, I'm going to be making some bacon and egg cheeseburgers. So the first thing I'm going to do is get my bacon cooked up. And anytime I have a large amount of bacon to cook, I like to do it in the oven on a cookie sheet. So I place it in a cold oven, crank it up to 400 and set a timer for 25 minutes. And it turns out perfect every single time. I'll just drain that on some paper towels. The next thing I'm going to do is butter and toast up some buns. So I'm grabbing some Sara Lee brioche buns and I've got my largest cast 
iron skillet out and I'm just buttering that up real good and I'm gonna toast these up two at a time. I wanted to do everything in one skillet so that's why I went ahead and did it first. I just did a real light toasting on it. Next I'm gonna grab a pound of 80-20 ground beef. That's always been the perfect amount for my family but now that my kids are getting a little bit older I do think that from now on I'm gonna bump it up to at least two pounds of ground beef when it comes to hamburgers. So I was trying to divide this into four equal sections and what do you know half of my meat was still frozen even though I'd been trying to get that thought out for forever but I bought this thaw claw off of Amazon. I've been using it for the last few months and I do really like it. I just put it in a Ziploc bag and it kind of just keeps it submerged into the water. I also did warm water to try to make it go quicker. Um, I did pour a little bit of that baking grease from the cookie sheet into the skillet because I really wanted to cook the meat into some baking grease. And despite all my efforts and me trying to rush because I had my fries cooking, the bacon was done done. I wanted it all to be hot, obviously. I rushed it and it was still a tiny bit frozen in the middle so I couldn't pat these out the way I originally planned so I just grabbed my hamburger press that I typically use on my blackstone and I'm just pressing them out the best that I can. I'm using parchment paper to help me keep it from sticking and you know I'm not trying to make smash burgers I'm just trying to make them look normal and I didn't hit my record button in time so I didn't get to show y'all me seasoning that first side but I just used the Kinder's the blend seasoning and I always cook my hamburgers and Worcestershire sauce we love that so after a few minutes I flip these on over and as you can see there is a beautiful crust on these that is why I love cooking burgers in a cast iron skillet turns out good every time and I'm just going in and seasoning the other side the same way these didn't take long to cook at all since they are on the smaller side you can always tell when burgers are done when there's no longer like any pink juices coming out of the top of the meat so once they were done I added a slice of sharp cheddar cheese to each of them and then removed them to a plate so my kids had no interest in having an egg on top of their burger so I'm just cooking some up for Josh and I I just cooked it in all that bacon grease and hamburger grease and all the seasons left behind and I did season it with a little bit more of that Kinder's the blend seasoning and let me tell you that was a really good egg and I'm pretty sure this is the first time I've ever had an egg on my cheeseburger um, it's just been in my head I've been wanting to do it I know it's pretty common like where I live but yeah, I can see why it's a thing because it was absolutely delicious. So I accidentally, you know, popped the yolk, but that's okay. Just served it with some crinkle cut fries, which they were just all right. I don't know what's wrong with me, but like anymore, I just don't like fries as much as I used to. I don't know what's going on there, but this was an amazing burger. On this night, I'm going to be making some oven fried chicken. And let me tell you, this is my number one favorite recipe out of this whole video. It is out of this world. Trust me. I started by adding a half a stick of butter to a cast iron skillet, popped it in the oven, and I'm letting it preheat to 425. In this dish, I have one egg and two tablespoons of water that I'm beating together to make an egg wash. I'm going to grab my plain panko breadcrumbs. I've measured out one cup. I'm adding that to a large Ziploc bag along with a quarter cup of all-purpose flour a half a teaspoon of pepper a teaspoon of salt and it calls for a teaspoon of this Montreal steak seasoning and I thought that was so genius to add to the chicken because it really like came out in this dish like it tasted so good and I really think that's what made it so special I also did some garlic powder in there, shook it around, and then I grabbed my chicken legs, rolled it around in the egg wash, and then dunked it in that bag one by one. I made sure to really go in there with my hands as well and really press it into the panko breadcrumbs to make sure that they're going to stick good. So I pulled my skillet out of the oven, and now I'm just adding in the chicken, making sure that the sides are not touching too much or anything. And... I really need to start using chicken legs more often. I always forget how delicious they are. I love dark meat anyways, but they're just so inexpensive and... I just, I can't tell you enough how much I love this recipe. Lastly, I'm just taking a little bit of olive oil and just drizzling it over each chicken leg. I just kind of poured it into the cap of the olive oil bottle. There's no certain amount. I just drizzled it until it looked right. And I'm going to pop that in that 425 degree oven and let those cook for 30 minutes. And then I'm going to pull it out and go in with my tongs. And I'm going to let those finish off for... 20 minutes and they will be done. I was so impressed with how golden brown and crispy that these got and they were just so tender and juicy. 
They were seasoned perfectly. And like I said, that Montreal steak seasoning really did something to these. And I love that these were cooked in butter. Gave it such a good taste. Now, as for the side dishes, which I obviously made while my chicken was cooking, but this is the you know, the way I'm going to show it to you. I just took some red potatoes. I washed and cut those. I drizzled them in some olive oil and seasoned them with some Tony's Creole seasoning and some black pepper. And then I just went in with my spoon and tossed those around really good to make sure they're all coated. coated. Um, I'm going to cook these up in my air fryer at 400 degrees. I cook them for 20 minutes, just going in about halfway and giving it a good shake. They turn out perfect every single time. And I also planned on making a broccoli and cheese casserole, which is something I've been wanting to make for quite a while now. And about halfway through cooking this, I realized that I was out of Ritz crackers. I hate when that happens. I should look before I got started, but I didn't. So I just kind of improvised and I'm just going to make some broccoli and cheese. Now, I was going to follow the Pioneer Woman's broccoli and cheese casserole recipe because I've made it before for a friend's giving. It was like years ago, but it was so delicious. So I'm kind of following that. So I will still link it in my description box. So I started by, you know, boiling up about one and a half pounds of broccoli florets and I cooked it until it was really nice and soft and then drained it off. And now I'm just chopping up about a pound of some Velveeta cheese, which is technically the great value version of Velveeta cheese, but basically the same thing. I cubed it up, threw it in that same pot, and I added a quarter cup of milk, a couple tablespoons of heavy cream. I seasoned it with some salt and pepper and just a touch of cayenne pepper. It doesn't make it spicy. It just gives it a little pop, which I love. I did a small amount of Dijon mustard. It really rounds everything out, and I just kept stirring it until it was melted and smooth, and then I just tossed in that cooked and drained broccoli. Again, in order for my family to like broccoli I do have to make sure it's super soft so it's basically just going to fall apart but I just folded it all in that cheese sauce and it will thicken as it you know cools down a little bit but here is my plate everything turned out super amazing this was just one of those dishes that you know, everything came out good, and I was really proud of it. Um, the sides came out good, even though the casserole didn't go the way I wanted it to. Broccoli and cheese is always really good anyways, but these chicken legs, I'm telling y'all, it is just, it's one of those recipes that I know I'm going to have probably for the rest of my life, and it's one of those things that I would proudly make on repeat. I'm not even kidding when I say that I liked it better than like your typical deep fried fried chicken. It was that good. Next up, I'm going to be making a smoked sausage and cream cheese pasta. This was another dish that really wowed me. I knew that it would probably be good, but I didn't expect it to be anything special. But boy, was I wrong, and I'm so thankful that I came across this recipe. It was so quick to throw together, super simple, very few ingredients like all of these things are my favorite things to hear. So it's another one of those meals that's definitely going to be a repeat dinner for us. We all loved it, especially my kids. A new family favorite. I'm excited to talk about this one. So in my large skillet, I just added a little bit of olive oil, let that heat up good, and then I just added in a package of chopped up smoked sausage. I seasoned it with onion powder. I browned that for a few minutes before adding in some fresh minced garlic. I just did like two big cloves of garlic, threw it on in there, and I just let that continue cooking for a couple of minutes. I'm kind of trying to scrape up the bottom as I go. That onion powder kind of stick to the bottom and wanted to kind of burn a little bit, but it's just extra flavor. Turned out really good. You can also, again, use actual onions instead of the onion powder. But once I got everything brown to my liking, I went ahead and scooped it all on out and placed it in a separate bowl. I made sure to get every little bit of that garlic out so that it wouldn't burn. And then at this point, I'm going to cook my pasta. I have some salted water cooking over there to the left, and I just I cooked up a half a box of that rotini pasta. To that same skillet, I added in a cup of chicken stock. I threw in one block of Philadelphia cream cheese that I did have at room temperature. It's going to make it a lot easier to melt. And I just added in a little bit of Italian seasoning and a little bit of some red pepper flakes. And as you can see, I'm just kind of taking the back of my spoon and kind of smushing it down in there to make it, you know, melt down quicker. And it only took a few minutes to turn into this beautiful, creamy, smooth sauce. So at this point, I went ahead and added back in the brown sausage and garlic. I also added in a half a cup of corn. 
This is just canned corn that I drained. Threw it on in there and I'm just tossing it all to coat. And I'm gonna let this cook for a few minutes just to heat back up the sausage and heat through that corn. And then lastly, I just tossed in that drained and cooked rotini pasta tossing it all together and then here in a little bit you'll see me adding a little bit of just some salt and black pepper to taste and that's all there was to it like I said came together so quick I just love that all the flavors just came together so perfectly and it just really impressed me and it's a super budget-friendly meal I know that I can always find smoked sausage on sale like close by for pretty cheap and my kids both went back for seconds and that's always a really good feeling. I'm just, I'm telling y'all, I highly recommend this one. And I served it with some, this is some sourdough bread that I froze. I thawed it out and then I just cooked it in a skillet with some garlic Parmesan basil butter that I always have on hand. It melted onto it really weird. Like I know that doesn't look good, but it tasted super good and it paired so perfectly with this pasta. Lastly, I'm going to make some mini like oven baked tacos and some copycat Taco Bell cheesy fiesta potatoes. So I'm starting with the potatoes first. I just got a bag of the frozen potatoes that you can find at most grocery stores. It's the diced one. I did let those thaw out in the fridge overnight and I did about a pound of those. So that's about half of that bag. This is about four servings. I added about three tablespoons of oil and just tossed it gently to coat. And then in this little bowl, I'm getting the seasoned coat and mix that goes on the potatoes so it's a tablespoon of flour and a tablespoon of cornstarch it's also a tablespoon of taco seasoning i could only find my half tablespoon measuring spoon so that's why you see me dumping it twice i did a quarter teaspoon of pepper and then a half a teaspoon of just some regular salt so I'm going to go in with the fork and I'm just going to mix that all together until it's good and combined. And I'm going to dump that on top of the potatoes. And again, I'm just taking my spatula and gently folding it all together. I wanted to be very careful to not like mush up the potatoes since they were thawed out. But once those looked good and evenly like seasoned and coated, I just dumped it out onto a parchment lined cookie sheet. And I'm just going to do the best that I can to spread that out evenly. That way everything gets cooked evenly and you know at a good time so I've got my oven preheated to 425 I cooked them for 20 minutes took it out flipped it around and cooked it for another 20 minutes so while the potatoes are cooking I'm going to get the taco started so in my skillet, I just have a pound of ground beef. As soon as it was browned up, I just took this can of Rico's nacho cheese sauce and I'm gonna heat that on up in a skillet to the side. And then once my meat was cooked, I drained off the grease. I added in a quarter cup of water and then I did a homemade taco seasoning blend, which of course the recipe will be in my description box. But it's just chili powder, cumin, salt, pepper, onion, and garlic powder. And then I just cooked that for a couple minutes more and it was ready. Now, in my experience, anytime I've ever done like a homemade taco seasoning, it always just comes out a little dry. And maybe that's the way it's meant to be, but I don't know. I feel like I should have added in some salsa or something, but I was just following the recipe. But anyways, I've got these little white street corn tortillas. I wanted to get the yellow ones just to give it more color, but they were out. Um, and I'm just taking a little bit of oil. This is a uh, canola oil. And I'm just brushing that over one side of the tortillas and I'm placing it all side down on a parchment lined cookie sheet. And I just added as many tortillas that that cookie sheet would allow. And then I'm simply just going around and adding some of that taco meat mixture that I just made onto each um, tortilla. So the recipe said to add about a tablespoon amount to each tortilla. I probably did like I probably doubled that and that's probably why I had so much trouble, which you'll see here in a little bit. Um, but I also took this shredded quesadilla cheese, which I love. I need to buy some more of that. And I'm just adding a little bit onto each taco. I pop that in the 425 degree oven for about a minute. And you're supposed to take it out and use a spatula to help you to fold these over. And that was just not working out. <laughs> Some of the tortillas were wanting to crack in half. Well, they just weren't staying, basically. So I popped them back in the oven for another minute. It helped a little bit, but not too much. So this about sent me over the edge, let me tell you. I just, it was already one of those days, and this was really 
annoying me. So I would not do this method again. I would just do these in a skillet, but I just did the best that I could to finish these up. I sprinkled a little bit of salt over the tortillas and I baked them for 10 minutes, flipping them halfway through. So while those are baking, I assembled the cheesy Fiesta potatoes. So I just pulled out some ramekins for all of us and I added plenty of the potatoes, plenty of that hot nacho cheese sauce and a good dollop of that sour cream. I gave myself three of these little mini crispy tacos. I added some crumbled up queso fresco over the top. I love that stuff. I could just eat it by itself. And I put a couple lime wedges on the side. I would have used cilantro, but my store was out of it. Now, these tacos were good, but they just weren't anything special in my eyes. Um, but the cheesy Fiesta potatoes were really, really good. I wouldn't say it was just like Taco Bell's, but it was good enough to make again for sure. So that does wrap up this video. I hope that this video Video was helpful. I want to thank you all so much for watching and I will see y'all real soon in my next video. Bye guys.